So we have here the CSS box model. So and margins and also paddings. The box model. All its HTML elements can be considered as boxes. In CSS, the term box model is used when talking about design and layout. The CSS box model is essentially a box that wraps around every HTML element. It consists of the margins, the border, the padding, and the actual content. The image below, so this image, illustrates the box model. So the content, so this one, the content of the box where text and images appear. And next, outside the content is the padding. So the padding clears an area around the content. Then we have the border. So this is the content. So the area around the content is the padding. Then we have the border. This will be the, the border that goes around the padding and content. And then outside the border, so that will be our margin. So clears an area outside the border. The margin is, of course, also transparent. So we have here a demo. So we have here an HTML file. And let's examine the contents of this HTML file. So we have H1 Hello World, H2 University of Luzon, then H1 again College of Computer Studies. So if we display, this will be our output. So again, both Hello World and College of Computer Studies are H1 and University of Luzon is using H2. Now let's try to modify the file. So we have here CSS. So on the first one, I have here asterisk and then, so my selector is asterisk, then margin zero and padding is set to zero. Asterisk here means that all elements will have this setting unless later on maybe changed or uh, overridden by the settings here so originally there are no paddings and no margins and then i have for h1 i place a border on h1 with a solid and with a thickness of one pixel and of course the color is black for H2, because I have H1 and H2 in my element, so H2, the border is also solid, two pixels and with the color red. So after specifying this style, this will be our output. You notice that there are no more spaces in between these elements because we, are, we actually have uh, set our padding and margin to zero. So margins. The CSS mar margin properties are used to create space around elements outside of any defined borders. So again, let's try to examine the, the box model. So we have content and outside the content will be the padding, outside the border will be the margin. So this is what we're talking about now, about margins. CSS has properties for specifying the margin for each side of an element. And these are the margin top property, margin right property, margin bottom property, and margin left property. All the margin properties can have the following values. So auto, then that means that the browser calculates the margin. So auto is mostly used for centering elements. The length specifies a margin in pixels in points or in cm and other uh, units of measurement percent specifies a margin in percent in percentage of the width of the containing element and inherit specifies that the margin should be inherited from the parent value or parent element so let's take a look at the margin shorthand property so instead of specifying margin top margin bottom margin left and margin right we can just have the margin 
just purely margin or margin property or that's called the shorthand property for margin so if the margin property has four values just like in the example margin 25 px 50 px 75 pixels or 100 pixels the first number will be our top margin so that's 25 px and then we will rotate clockwise so the next number will be our right margin so in this case it's 50 px so after the right margin we rotate we go to the bottom so 75 pixels will be our bottom margin then we rotate further and then 100 px will be our left margin so what if the margin property has three values so just like in this case margin 25 px 50 px and 75 px then if you have three values the first value is the top margin then the second value will be the right and the left margin so that means if you have three values the left left and the right margin are identical are always identical and then on the bottom margin we have 75 pixels so again the first number will be the top the second will be right left and right and the last number will be the bottom margin so what if you have only two values so margin 25 px and 50 px then the first number will be the, the value for the top and the bottom margins and the second value will be for the right and the left margin now what if the margin property has only one value like for example margin 25 px then that means that all four margins the top the right the left and the bottom will have the same value that is 25 px for this particular example so let's try to demonstrate so a while ago you have observed that the elements are actually there are no spaces between the elements so what we're going to do now is we're going to specify some sort of space between the elements that's why for h1 we have margin we have 30 px and 40 px so 30 px will be actually our top margin and the bottom margin and 40 px will be our left and right margin then for h2 we also have the margin so margin 10 px for top margin and bottom margin and 50 px for left and right margin so if you're going to view this supposed to be h2 will have wider left and right margin so let's try to look at the output so that's the output again we can see that h2 the one with the red border has a wider left and right margin and now the elements have spaces in between them so that's because of the top and the bottom margins of each of these elements so after margins we have css padding the css padding properties are used to generate space around an element content inside of any defined borders with css you have full control over the padding these are the properties for setting the padding of each side of an element so these are the top right bottom and left so again this is the box model we have discussed this previously so let's proceed to the next slide so padding individual sides so css has properties for specifying the padding for each side of an element so we have padding top padding right padding bottom and padding left all the padding properties can have the following values so specific length so maybe in pixels points centimeters we have percent so per so percent of the width of the containing element inherit specifies that the padding should be inherited from the parent element and negative values are not allowed for padding but for margins we can also have negative values so padding shorthand property if the padding property has four values then similar with a margin the first value will be our top padding and the second value will be our right padding again it is rotating clockwise 
then the third value will be our bottom margin or bottom padding and the fourth value will be our left padding so what if we have three values for our padding so similar to margins the first value here for padding will be the top padding and then the second value will be both for left and right padding and the last value will be for the bottom padding so what if we have two values only for the padding so just in uh, just like for example in this case padding 25 px and 50 px so the first number will be the top and bottom paddings so in this case it is set to 25 pixels and the second number will be the left and the right padding so in this example again it is uh, assigned or we have assigned 50px to be the left and right paddings so what if there is only one value provided so if there's only one value provided then that means that all of the paddings for each side will have identical values and in this example it will be 25 pixels so we have our code a while ago but this time we have added padding so padding uh, if you still remember padding is actually inside the border so outside the border will be our margins so and then inside the border will be the space for padding so before the element or the contents of the element so in this example padding 50px so what does that mean that for each one the top the right the bottom and the left padding will have identical values uh, 50 px and then on the second example again shaded by yellow i provided four values so padding so 30 px here will be our top padding 20 will be so clockwise that's a right padding 40 px will be our bottom padding and 20 px will be our left padding so this is now the example you notice that we have here a wider space in between the border and the content itself so that is the padding and this is space between the elements is actually the margin so here you notice that this is the top of my uh, browser or yes the browser and we have space here that's that, that's the top margin for each one okay so again the space inside the border it's padding the space outside the border is actually the margins so let's have here another demonstration so what we have done here is we have created an area or a container an area or a container with the ID box one so of course that will not display anything yet so that's the output and then we now try to uh, specify some format for the division the box one division so I have a number box one because box one here is an ID attribute so if it is an ID attribute we use number then the name of the attribute so number box one so I have here I have provided a height of 350 pixels and a width of 500 pixels and the border will be solid one pixel in thickness and with the color black then for the box shadow we have 8px 8px and then a feathering of 5px and then with the gray color and the background color is salmon so this will be our output And then I now provided margin 40px auto. So there are two values. So if there are two values, what does that mean? The first value will be our top and bottom margin, and the second value will be our left and right 
margin. So you notice now that we have space on top of the box. Uh, we have shown you the box a while ago before uh, those properties about margins. And we also have left and right margin as auto. If that is automatic, then uh, the remaining space will be divided equally by left and right. And that ends our lesson about margins and paddings and the box model of CSS. Thank you.